All other views and opinions expressed here are those of the individual speaking and may not be representative of Coding American. At times, language may be considered vulgar. Listener discretion is suggested. You are now listening to the Coding Behind the Wheel podcast. All right, we're live. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Wheel Wednesday podcast. I'm Nick. This is Scott. And, uh, yeah, welcome back, to, uh, welcome back to the podcast. What's up, Scott? How's it going? Good. Yeah. How yeah. was uh how was Los Angeles? I know how much you love it there. It was alright. <laughs> I'm happy to be back. <laughs> yeah, the weather wasn't any good. Like really? it was That's ex- surprising. It when was, I was there it was sunny and warm and it was exactly the same here as it was in, in LA. So it was raining? Yep. It rained that, that, that's it rained surprising. Every day and pretty much and it was not warm. I think it's just because you went there, and you went there with this bad energy of, I don't like L.A., so it was like, you know what? Since you don't like me, we're going to rain while you're here. If I, so, had, if I had gone, it would have been bright and sunny. So with that, I'm back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, so, uh, yeah, it was, a, it, was a long, it was a long week and uh, weekend, and um, I didn't get the things done I wanted to do. I, well, I mean, did I you get something. Did you get anything fun done? I never got to Motor Trend. No, didn't work out. Um, so I never got over there to do to hang out with those guys. So, Damn. you know, it is what it is. By now, everybody has heard the the news of Super Street uh, no longer being in print. So yeah, so <clears throat> that's unfortunate. Um, you know, look, I, I think that you know I've seen a lot of people, you know. That you know that I know that are editors and former editors and yeah. um, I sh- actually had even st- I did a little contributing editing at one point Super Street years ago. Uh, I had written a few articles for them and 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 done a couple text stories and um, you know there's always a sentimental part I think of of any car guy uh, especially with Super Street and their history and their their legacy. Yeah, that's a little sad to see an era close, right? And, um, but, you know, I mean, listen, I think that it's to be expected. I mean, you so, know, so and I'm, I'm actually not really up to date on this. I've, I've seen a few things here and there about it. So what exactly is, so they're not doing any more print. Are they going yeah, full so, digital? So for, yeah, I mean, the, the short answer is yes. I mean, for a long time, you know, if you're not familiar with the whole relationship here, I'll try to synopsis it real quick. Right. Um, for a long time, you know, there have been a history of books closing and consolidating. I'm going to say probably now almost 10, almost 10 years, maybe a little bit less than that, maybe eight years, like 2012-ish, maybe mm-hmm. from there, maybe 2010, but right around there. Um, you know, the first major hit of closures, I think, that would affect the our target audience would have been the groups like Modified Magazine and Turbo Magazine and Sport Compact Car. And, and we saw those about 10 years ago. Yeah. And um, and then, you know, maybe like, you know, seven or eight years ago, um, I think that was when Modified went. And, you know, an import tuner. And we've kind of seen books start to dwindle. Now, you know, look, I, I think that there's a couple of ways of looking at this. There's there's the people that, that you know, I've seen in the industry that are very supportive of print and this, this legacy. And yeah. you'll see them take the side of, you know, it's really the enthusiast fault. It's our fault. Like, if because we're not buying as, as yeah. many magazines or subscribe to as many magazines, so it's not it's it's not cost effective to continue putting out a book. Putting out a book, yeah, yeah. Um, and and so yes, I mean, uh, agreed. If more people bought it, it'd still be around. Oh, absolutely. Well, but that's you know, anything. <clears throat> but right. But like you know, at some point, you know, there was there was a, a time that came. Where, you know, different medias or mediums start to decline. I mean, look, around the world right now, newspapers, the physical print newspapers are, you know, on a world record pace to be eliminated, right? Uh, You have magazines that are right there. It's not that the support of those things necessarily has gone away, I mean, do I think in some arguable cases it's gotten smaller? Of course. Oh, definitely. But it's not that they went away. It's just that the attention graph and how we consume media is completely different. 
Yeah, now everything is digital. is digital. Uh, you know, with with us being able to just pull out our phones and have access to everything immediately. Yep. It's like, you know, why go buy a newspaper, why get a magazine when I can just go on their website or I can get the latest news sent directly to my phone. Yes. You know? Yes. So you know, and I and I think the other part of it is too is that you have to understand that when it comes down to what Super Street was and what Super Street is today, and I'm not talking about Super Street as as the group of people and editors and content creators that you'll now still see on Instagram and, and, right. and things like that. I'm talking about the actual print book and what it originally was. You have to understand that like these guys used to have the budget and the money, and, and, and they used to fly all over the country and the world even, you know, go to Japan and different things. Right. And they would bring you the coolest builds that were around, right? And so that was happening, and, and the problem with that was was that once you got to a point where people could self-publish, once you got to a point where people could put things up digitally or, the you know, like the forums probably took a good sting, orig- you know. 10 years ago, yeah. 15 years ago, because you were put, watching people do build threads and things like that. But these magazines, you know, they were, you know, they're three months behind. When you make a book, the stuff that they finish shooting and kind of put in a book today won't be on newsstands for about three months. Yeah. As opposed to if you were to just, uh, you know, upload something to your website, you could, you can, if you really put the time in, you can shoot. Edit, write an article, and get all that stuff in definitely less than a week. Some people, if they have a big enough team, in a day, in a 24-hour time period, shot, edited, uploaded, you know? Yeah, and, and, and our technology has made it so that, you know, that's what people expect. They expect Absolutely. that short turnaround. But what, what ends up becoming a problem is how does it? How do the group of editors like Sam Dew and stuff like that from Super Street currently, how do they find builds that haven't been seen before to make it so that you want to go buy a magazine – because oh, it's yeah. the only exclusive way you can find out about that right. build. Okay, not I see what, going I, to happen. I see what you're saying. The exclusiveness is taken away because it's already out there. It's already out there. They're covering who, cars who, that you've whoever, seen ten times. Whoever owns that car could have their own YouTube channel. They could, or or, or no one's going to keep their car under wraps just for the sake of making sure that they get a Super Street print feature. Right. So it, it put them behind the eight ball as soon as that began to happen. So. I, listen, like I said, I've heard people in the industry say, hey, look, it's our fault. I, I think that it's not really – I mean, yes, if, if people bought it, it would still be around. I think that this is just a change. I mean, you know, look, go go find a payphone. It, it's not going to happen. Like <laughs> things change. I've, I've seen change. like one or two randomly throughout the city. Yeah. That's just like – That you probably aren't even hooked up. No. But – Look, things change, times change, and, you know, it's been no different. If you look at, you know, artists, the artists that you have seen have long careers, have reinvented their music over and over again. Yeah. You know, and we're just talking about a consumable change in media, how people look at at different things. I I think that Super Street will continue to be um, a really interesting digital source. I think that, you know, maybe they'll put a little bit more – emphasis and play into the website that they have. I know Super Street Online, they dot com, they, they put a lot of, of their features there. So I think that you'll you'll probably see some stuff pop up there a lot more. Do the well so so they update their articles and stuff on there, right? Yeah, and, and Sim- and similar Instagram to how the print like the print yeah. magazine was. So I don't know if you know this, but how how does uh it like correlate like with the magazine? Like do they print the online ones when it comes out later or do they do it while it's still I guess kind of relevant um, or as they do it and then later the magazine I comes think, out I think their website for the most part at this stage had been um, had been almost like an archive you know stuff gotcha. that had been published they would put in stuff like after gotcha. um, not but they, but they were mixing it in especially lately with like when they do a week to wicked or whatever it is which is happening you'll find the article there that day the end right, of the day right um, so I think that they're doing that. So I think you're going to see them. Listen, I think Super Street, it, you know, it still has a, a quite a force and audience of following. And I think that they'll, if they continue to go in the right way, I think you should understand what the what the ownership path was. I mean, many 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 years ago, you know, uh, Super Street was owned by a company called Prime Media. Prime Media, and if I miss any of these changes, you know, 
forgive me. Um, Prime Media went to um, to source Interlink. They're a big conglomerate of magazines and publishing, um, and they had bought Super Street as part of a big big buy from Prime Media. Right. And then it went to um, so it went from Peterson's to Prime, to source Interlink. Um, no, I'm sorry. It was Peterson's. Then, then it was Prime Media. Then Prime Media was. Uh, then uh, they bought the book from sor- to Source Interlink. Then Source Interlink was bought uh, was reconfigured and kind of they took away a bunch of titles. That's when that happened, and it would turn into what they called Ten, which was the Enthusiast Network. Yeah. And then the Enthusiast Network, um, most recently turned into the Motor Train Group, which was acquired. By the Discovery Channel. So, uh, you know, if you're familiar with, you know, Discovery Channel and the different programming that they have, um, they had picked up uh, a portion of these print publications and digital entities that they find to be successful. And what you're seeing now is they've rolled into this Motor Trend group thing um, as Motor Trend's kind of the staple of that group. It always has been. Yeah. And they're going to start to put more of that content into two f- places. And again, I'm I'm doing this all kind of from from my knowledge of knowing people that work there and stuff like that. It doesn't mean that um, I'm a thousand percent right on this, right? So don't yeah. take this as Bible. But um, you know, they're they're going to put these these mediums in primarily two sources. One is Motor Trend on Demand. They have a YouTube channel, which is wildly successful that they converted to I think, you, have, a, you have to pay for it or? yes so they have so they have they have their youtube channel but they also have motor trend on demand which is um uh like a subscription-based service that you pay per month and you have all this content that they put out and i also think the other medium you'll start to see some of this stuff go is i think you're going to start to see some of this stuff end up on the discovery network in as shows as television so shows. there's some of the stuff that they have online uh, in print, right? So oh, I think you're going to start okay, to see. Okay, I think okay. you're going to start to see some of this stuff transition into some television shows. I think you'll start to see some of this media end up um, as digital shows. Uh, I think that Super Street's got if they if they go the right direction, I think they potentially have a lot of uh, leverage leverage and viability um, as a digital s- segment all on its own between Instagram and potentially YouTube. And their website and different things. So, so I don't know that they're. I don't know that they're gone. You know, people. I've I've been watching a lot of people say R.I.P. And yeah, well, no, they're... Super Street's. It's not that Super Street's gone. Right. Um, and and there's a lot and, of other books that went with this whole thing, as well. I mean, they killed off a lot of books. So, you know, some of the four by four books, cor- the Corvette books, domestic mm-hmm. books. I mean, they all seem to go in the same thing. And so, so they're they're transitioning, and they have been for a while. And you can make a case on a lot of different things, you know. How do you feel about it? Do you think it's a good thing that they're stopping with it, or do you I think, think I don't. Still... I don't think it's a good or a bad thing. I think I think it's 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 the way things went. Like that was what was coming. It, if you haven't been able to see it for a long time, then you know, unfortunately, I, again, me, my own personal opinion, not Koenig's opinion, but I feel that you are incredibly out of touch. If you didn't see that this was coming, if this was a shock, like if you if you were one of these people that saw the Facebook post. And you were like shocked that they're not printing these books anymore. You just you just weren't yeah. in touch. Well, I I don't I don't have a subscription to Super Street. I don't I don't get magazines or books or anything like that. Yeah. But just just seeing that, I was just like, oh, okay, they're probably just transitioning to digital to digital. Yeah, because everyone yeah. was like, oh, RIP, RIP, RIP. Um, well, and no I'd more say, su- it, no more Super Street magazine. And I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, it's the end of an era. That's that's just a magazine, like yeah, well, and it is, you know, and, it, and it's the end. Be of, able to get everything. It's the end of an era. As a as an enthusiast, I can't tell you how much Super Street uh, magazine meant to me. I mean, like, I, like I'm not even like, not joking. Like, it really did. Like, growing up, you know, waiting for every issue of Super Street magazine to drop, and you know, if you didn't have a scrip- subscription, like, for me, I didn't have a subscription, but I used to like, you know, we have Seven Elevens, which are. Right. You know, for people that don't have them in different parts of the country, like comedian stores, um, and I used to remember, like you know, my my first the magazine from the month before would say the date range that it was on sale too. So within the week afterward, you know, I would pop up to Seven Eleven looking yeah. for the next the next issue. 
and you know when there wasn't Instagram and when there wasn't Facebook and there wasn't these social medias, you know, and there was a few forums for me when I was younger, but they were really crude. You know, that's how we saw. That's how you kind of looked at things to try to get ideas about different things you yeah. could build and yeah. who was pushing the envelope and you know what types of parts were available. I can't tell you how many decisions were made when I was younger just from reading that magazine. Yes. Well, now now it's all YouTube. You watch YouTube. Well, it's, it's YouTube, it's Instagram. You, you these builds you see, f- you see far more builds now. Oh, absolutely. Before you ever even, you know, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, so so that information is available. You can Google, and and so so information has changed quite a bit, and you know, and with that um, came the demise of of print publications. There are still some people printing magazines, right? Yeah, definitely. D Sport still prints a magazine. Um, I think Performance Auto Sound still prints a magazine, which is, you know, you can make the argument that it, whether it is or isn't kind of coverage, but they have some overlap there. Um, S3 is still printing a magazine. Um, you know, and, and all these companies have obviously added a digital – Grassroots Motorsport still printing a magazine. So, And there are plenty of other books that are still printing magazines. Um, so I would say if you're – if you're out there and you're hurt by Super Street's downfall, well, you got a few books that are still left. Go support them. Subscribe up. Them. Yeah. And if you think it's the changing times, I think every single one of those books that I just mentioned has been doing more and more digitally over the past. So they're using the, the print book, I think, in the right method, which is it's not their primary focus. It's, right. the, it's the supplemental piece that comes out. Absolutely. So, so uh, listen, I mean – that's my take on it. Super Street going away is one of those things that um, is sad because it kind of does it's the, mark it's the end of an era, right? But it, you know, is it necessary? Uh, I mean, if nobody's gonna buy it, then you know, yeah. I mean, you necessary. think it'll ever come back? No, <laughs> no, because I, I don't think, I don't think magazines are gonna come back. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think. I don't think newspapers are going to come back. I, I just that's not how we consume our media. I'll tell nope. you right now, my day starts the same way every morning. Wake up, providing check your phone. providing that my kids don't wow. destroy it. But <laughs> but but every morning my my day starts the same. I I wake up, figure out where I am. Most of the time it's in my bed, <laughs> um, and uh, I grab my phone. And you know the first thing I do is Start I flip scrolling. through and look for the news, and then. Then I'll hit my, you know, hit my Instagram a lot of times, and then I'll check some emails and stuff like that. And that happens within the first five minutes. First five minutes of opening your eyes, usually, and this is everybody. First five minutes of opening your eyes are always checking your phone. Yeah, and I mean, to, and to say you you don't do that is like you you are a rare entity if you don't check your phone. Maybe the first, you know. Maybe I believe that there's people out there that don't check their phone right away, but I but but I do think that there's a strong majority there. <clears throat> And if that's where you're consuming your media, like my news, I mean, think about it. Like, you know, for you to figure out what happened, you'd have to, you know, you know, 10, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, you would go, you turn the TV on, you'd wait for the news to run through all that stuff, or you'd go get the paper, you'd open up the paper, and look in the paper, right, right. That. So, but now this happened, all of that, the, everything, inf- the information you're looking for is so instant. You don't have to wait right. for the news broadcast to get to that, right. That portion, you the don't bomb have shells, to... The bombshells don't happen because you get an alert on your phone almost immediately. Yeah. <clears throat> so news has changed, and how we kind of consume that news has changed. So everything else that comes relevant changes. Yeah. And and that's what happened. And, um, you know, listen, nostalgia is, is something that, you know, will hold forever. Like I still remember, like, reading articles that were really – monumental for for me like like i said i've said it a few times like i'm a dsm guy and um and some things and you know watching brent rao turn turn his 2g dsm into you know 2g um eclipse into something that was for me like way up here watching john shepherd take the take the cover uh you know take the pages of um uh, you know, of uh, modified magazine or, or anything back then, uh, or but you know, sport compact car, turbo magazine, uh, you know, that to me was like, you know, the yeah. holy grail. Well, I well, you know, it's it's interesting that you say that because now that relates and me personally that and 
like that relates to YouTube videos. Like the same way you remember yeah. those builds, you've read those articles, you'll get that. Like I can think of builds I used to watch when I first got into cars. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, like what is this guy doing to his car? What is this guy doing? And like the progression of yeah of whatever projects that they went through. So it's it's kind of interesting to see the difference, but like, it, like it's, it's the same but different. Like you remember reading the magazine, seeing the build, and seeing what these guys yep. are doing. You know, you would wait for for the magazine at Seven Eleven, whereas I'm waiting the following week for the next YouTube episode to come out for that build series that I was watching. Yeah, I mean, it's hard it's hard to say this, but like, I mean, <laughs> you think about how much. I mean, when I when I had my first like when I when I before I really got into like actually building a few of my own engines for my cars. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I bought an engine. Like, I, I had a short block built. And, right. Um, and I did send a head out. But and, and so, like, how did I make those decisions? Like, I remember reading the book, and I, I think it was this guy, Sean Glazer at, uh, at the point, and he's from New Jersey, but he's a huge, like, was really, really fast uh, DSM guy. And I remember, like, seeing a feature on his car, and I spoke to him, and I ended up caught, catching him. Uh, you know, at uh, at SEMA, uh, I think uh, IAS, like in New Jersey, like yeah, a million years ago. Um, and I remember in the article it said like you know he had had all his work done. Uh, I don't know if he worked there, but uh, this company called Head Games, which is I believe in New Jersey, and like I, I they're still around, and I believe, and um, and I remember like sending the head and getting getting head ported from there, and yeah, big dollar stuff, and like so so I guess what I'm saying is like so many decisions. So yeah, I mean Super Street and w- having the opportunity to have written a few articles. That's pretty cool. And have them published uh in there um that's it, that's something that's that's completely different. Like you being able to write for that magazine is a lot different than as opposed to like you know, you publishing your own like YouTube stuff to to go out. That that's something Yeah, I think it is, is really because cool. it was it was a credible so it was like cause right. so I guess for me right. it would be, I guess for people out there if you maybe if you wrote a story and then Jalopnik said they would run it it'd be kind of similar. Yeah. Me. But but yeah, I mean like I hold I held um it was really exciting for me you know, and I still I kept I kept those books and you know, I wrote for Project Car, what, there was another magazine that this that the Super Street Group there yeah. had put out. I, you know, I, we did some articles there, um, and um, and I'll be forever grateful for uh, for John Naderi and um, and Jonathan Wong and 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 Sam Du. Who, um, well, I mean, Sam wasn't. He was kind of un, um, uh, an editor, but not. He wasn't editor in chief. But um, you know, for those guys for allowing me to to write a few articles. You know, just because I could. Yeah, you know, um, so so these are all good guys, and uh, you know, John and Derry is with Hoonigan now, and uh, Jonathan Wong, I believe, is um, he's with is he with Driving Line, or he uh, he moved or C Studios, I think he's with C Studios. Um, but these guys are, you know, part of a, a a legacy and a history that will will transcend them, right? Um, so I would just say for enthusiasts that maybe, you know, buying those books wasn't your path, um. You know, show a little homage to those guys because they really did help pave a way for um, a lot of the media type things that you see today. You know, YouTube would have come around, but right. that interest of, of car builds and features and that whole concept of having your car featured or, or having some special presence reserved for the best of the best um, or some of the cool cars um, that came from them. So, um so look, I mean, you, what do you want to call it—a sad day or a happy day—or you want to say it was coming or not coming, or it's our fault or not our fault? Um, the closure has been done, and and Super Street, um, unfortunately, is no longer printing magazines. So, you know, there we go. But I'm sure that there's people right now that you know, like the same way I used magazines, um, are watching BS for Build, and yeah. maybe maybe they have an FRS. That they're trying to put a two JZ into, and maybe they're watching every installment of the, of you know Chris's uh, you know from BS for Build series of him swapping in that car, right? Um, and I'm sure a lot of people make decisions about what parts they may want to get based off of experiences of good or bad. They may come from, you know, some of the guys out there that are that are running those parts. Yeah. So, definitely. so it you know it's it's the same type of thing. You know, just keep in mind. Um, what that is, but you know, to anybody, I, you know, I haven't heard of any major 
Um, right now, I mean, there's some freelance, obviously, but I haven't heard any major interior shakeups um, at the group. I'm, I'm, I'd imagine some of them may come, but um, you know, if anybody is, you know, over there that you know may be having an issue where they, you know, are unfortunately uh, getting let go or whatever it is, you know, sorry, always sorry to hear that. Um, but, but I haven't heard anything like that right now, um, and uh, I don't know. So. Um, a lot of love to those guys at Super Street and some of the books that are kind of no longer going to be printing. Um, they certainly paved the way for, for a lot of cool vehicles to get seen by people, right? Yeah. Yeah. So let's see. Um, we'll talk about one more thing before we move on and close this thing out. Sure. Um, our plan is every Wednesday – to go live on Instagram. Yes. Um, every, we may every Wednesday. Every Wednesday we're going to have a live Q&A. That's right. Um, you know, where we're going to – obviously, we post our Wheel Wednesday podcast, which is what you guys are watching now, and and on Instagram and Facebook. Are we oh, going to do Facebook also? We'll try. Well, we could do Facebook we'll, also. We'll, we'll try. We'll try Instagram and Facebook. So, we'll, I mean, Instagram and uh, – yeah, I said that right. Instagram, yeah, and, Instagram Facebook. and Facebook. So the only thing I would ask you guys to do if you're watching this is – and I wish we would do this in the beginning. We never remember to do it in the beginning. <laughs> but what I would ask you guys to do is um, go ahead and turn the notification bell on for Instagram. Um, and, and I think you can also select on Facebook, like let – you know, kind of let me know. Yeah. When this person is live or something like that. Right. Um, Because we're going to bring you some Q&As and they're going to be – we're going to go as long and short as we need to. So if we don't have a lot of questions that day, we'll wrap up soon. If we do, um, we'll we'll stay and we'll answer them. And in addition to that, uh, we'll also always be talking about kind of the subject of whatever the Wheel Wednesday podcast is that day. So uh, when we go live later – um, we will be talking about kind of – we talked about Super Street or whatever it may be. Right. So um, – and so we'll, we're just going to do this to kind of add some value. And, and whatever you guys have questions about, um, as long as it's somewhat automotive related and it makes sense that we can answer it, <laughs> we'll, we will do so. So that's that's our plan. I think the time we talked about right now is 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah. Uh... So 12 Pacific Time. Yes, I had to think about that. I was like, right. So math in my head. Yes, <laughs> I think that's the time we talked about. So that so pencil that in your calendars. Um, and we will do it every Wednesday as long as I'm here or whatever it may be. Right. And um, if you have any questions or anything like that, you can throw them down below. You can, if you're listening on on iTunes, right? <laughs> if you're listening on iTunes, head over to YouTube. Uh, uh, you can throw a comment or, throw a comment or just tune in. Or tune in, tune in on Instagram on Wednesday right. around 3 p.m. And if and for everybody that's not, if you wouldn't mind, if you are watching this on YouTube, if you wouldn't mind and you're still here, give us that thumbs up and subscribe, please. We always forget to do that in the beginning. I know. We should just do it in the beginning. <laughs> Anyhow. Do um, you have anything else you want to throw in here this um, week? Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I think I think this was a good topic talking about uh, yeah. about Super Street. Um, I was not prepared for this. <laughs> Never know what's going to happen here in the podcast. Yeah, but uh, stay tuned for the topic we were supposed to do today next week. <laughs> <laughs> it's accurate, but I, you know when we were talking about it, I feel like whatever you know, it was uh, yeah, it was cool. It's one of those things that just like just got into it. Yeah, you know? so. Anyhow, that's it. I think uh, we'll catch you next time, next Wednesday, um, as we approach the holiday. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Pretty pumped. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, we still got a couple weeks. We still got a couple weeks. No, no, no. I'm going to check this calendar. Why? Are we doing Wednesday is Christmas Day? <laughs> Are we going to drop a Wednesday? <laughs> drop a, a Christmas Day a Wednesday? Christmas Day. I don't know. We'll to be Wednesday determined. We'll be determined. find out next Wednesday when we actually have it figured out. <laughs> so I guess until then, we'll uh, we'll catch you next Wednesday. Peace. Peace.